what we're going to be going over here is a learning error experience curve and we're going to look at plotting this learning curve here on a log log graph but we'll start out just looking at it in terms of a regular graph here so on our regular graph here we're going to have our x number of units produced here along our x-axis and along our y-axis we're going to have the we'll start out looking at this graph as the average time here per unit so when we're talking about a learning curve here, this is where we start out with a new production operation or a new product here. And when we start out, we're not very efficient. But as we build more and more to the product here, we become more and more efficient. And that's going to reduce our average time that's required to build the product. So what we're going to be looking at here is really we want to focus in here on two different learning uh, uh, rates here. Uh, I'm showing uh, in this red line here, we're going to call that an 80% learning rate and a 20% improvement rate. And in the green line here that's up above the red line, that's going to be a 90% learning rate with a 10% improvement rate. Well, right away you think that, oh, 90% sounds better than 80%. But in fact, it isn't. You can just look at it here in the graph. Because with the 80% uh, learning rate, this equates to a 20% improvement rate. And what they're saying by that is every time you double your output, you reduce your average time here per unit by 20%. But again, both of these curves here are exponential decreasing curves here. So that's going to be the come here, a key here with our log log graph here. And then let's look at this 90% learning rate. That's, it's not as good as the 80% because the reason is uh, with the 90% learning rate, you only have a 10% improvement rate. That is, every time you double your output here, you only decrease your average time here per unit by uh, 10%. 80%, you're reducing your average time on a per unit basis each time you double it by 20%. So that's the key here. Okay, so when we're talking about this uh, uh, learning curve here, really we have this function here. Y, our average time here equals uh, A here, which is actually the cost or time to produce the first unit times whatever units we're putting out raised to some exponential. Uh, uh, it's going to be the learning rate here raised to the power or exponential exponent b here okay so that's what we're talking about here with these two different curves here and we're just looking at it in terms of a uh, uh, regular plotting here so you can see you've got these two different curves here and they're exponentially moving down okay so let's go look at this in terms of a log log plot okay so this is what we talk about a learning curve here with a log log plot and what we're talking about a log log plot is that you're going to scale this here you're going to have a log scale here on your y-axis and a log scale here on your x-axis and what we mean by that log scale as you can see your increments here uh, it's based on whatever log you're working with here but you're going to plot this here i you're going to use some graphical um, package here and i've used uh, maplesoft here to graph this and what we're talking about here with this Again, with our log scales here, along our y-axis, I'm showing the average time per unit. And it's actually same as what we had for the, our other graph, our conventional graph here. It's going down. As we move down our axis here, we're reducing our average time per unit. And then along our x-axis, these are the numbers, uh, number of units produced. Uh, we're increasing it as we move along in our x-axis here from left to right here. Okay, so before we get into this, these straight lines here, just make a point here. When we're talking about this average time per unit, really this y-axis here, that really relates to the learning proficiency here. And that's really telling you that as you move down here, uh, your average time per unit, you're becoming more proficient. You're, being, you're becoming more efficient here. Then that's your, uh, that's your learning here that you're looking at. And then... Along your x-axis, you can equate that here. The, the, we had those number of units produced. That's really your learning experience. So the more, the more you produce here, you have greater learning experience. So learning experience here is increasing based on the number of units produced. And then your average time here is decreasing based on your learning proficiency here. Becoming more proficient, you're actually increasing your learning proficiency here while you're reducing your average time per unit. Okay, so back to our graph here. So the nice thing here with these log-log graphs is instead of looking at that curved uh, curve that we had, that exponential curve going down here, because this is an exponential function here, we can look at it in terms of straight lines here. 
And we're going to look at it in terms of this, uh, this 90% learning right here. You can see that's our green line here. And then our 80% learning right here, that's our red line. So the key is here, again, the 80% is better. The steeper the slope, comparing the two here, that means you have the steeper the slope, the more rapid your progress is. That is, you have a greater learning proficiency here and a lower cost. Less average time, lower cost. So the key here with the log log plot, it's easy to look at, take those exponential curves and you can plot them out here. Again, I just use some computer, uh, uh, MapleSoft computer uh, plotting program here just to plot these lines out here. And the key is here, look at our slope here. And these are negative slopes. Those, if we did uh, that, uh, this would be here, that's the B here, that exponent, or we raised our, uh, our function for that y equals ax raised to the power of b. b is our learning right here. And b equals, in this case, the log of base 2 times our learning rate, our log of base 2 of 0.90 here, or that equates to a 90% learning rate. And if you take that, the log of base 2 here to the 9.90, that's going to give you a slope here of minus 0 0.1520 here. Okay, so the key is here, when you're determining these slopes here, you have to base it on the log here, base to, to whatever your learning rate is here, and it would be whatever that percentage is here, in a decimal, decimal point of that percentage. Okay, so then for our other line here, and that was for that 90% learning right here, the green line here. So you can see that doesn't have as steep a slope here as that red line here. And then for our red line here, that's that 80% learning rate. So if we, that, that's our B, our exponent value here, that learning rate. And that equals the log, again, of base 2 of the 80% learning rate, or 0 0.80. And that's going to give us a slope here of minus, again, 0 0.3219. Negative slope here. Sloping down is always negative. So you can see here, learning rate here, 90% has a lesser slope here of minus 1.20 versus our 80% learning right here, negative 0.3219 here. Okay, so the deal is with these log log plots, you can look at them and instead of just trying to interpret some line here where you had that curving down with our xy coordinate, by because that curve down here was an exponential decreasing curve here, we could put it on a log log graph, a log scale here, log scale here and you get those nice straight lines that you can look at it and compare so really what you're looking at is you want to find uh, look at you want to look at the steepness of the slope here and again the steeper the slope it means you've got better learning proficiency and you're improving your learning right here is you're improving and driving your cost lower cost here on the product. Okay, so just take that away with this here uh, log log graph. You have to have, you can't just do a log graph. We're doing a log on the y scale and a log here on the x scale. Okay, so that's for our average time per unit or our individual time. Now let's just go look at the other one here, other curve. Okay, so our other curve that we have to deal with with these this learning curve is really the cumulative uh, time here. So again, uh, we get, they're going to be curving on some exponential curving upwards here. And again, this 80% learning rate that I'm showing in red here. And the 90%, again, it sort of looks like it's straight, but it has got some curvature to it here. That's the 90% learning rate. But this is the total time that we take here per hour. So in this case, uh, it's increasing here. But because we had, and you can compare the two here, where that's what we want to be looking at, green here, our 90% learning rate, we have a greater cumulative total time here because our improve, we're not improving as fast as we are with the 80%. We're only having a 10% improvement rate every time we double our production with the 90%, whereas as with the 80%, we have that 20% improvement rate. And all this, all we're looking at here is an, an exponentially increasing. That's all we want to take away from this. And understand we got these two different rates that we're dealing with here. Okay, so again, our x-axis, that's our number of units produced. Total time here is on our y-axis here, showing over here. Nonetheless, those, this is just a conventional graph here. So let's go look at that on our log-log plot. Okay, so for our log log plot, again, we're going to have these nice steep, these lines here. Again, a log scale here, 
And on our y-axis, that's a total time. It's in increasing here in an hours. And along our x-axis, we got our number of units that we've produced here. Again, they equate to the same thing here. Just to make a learning proficiency. Uh, actually, the lower our total time here is the greater learning proficiency we have. And that's based, you can see that here, looking at our two different lines here. And we talk about a lower time here based on the number of units produced here. Again, our learning experience here, as it increases here, that it increases along our x-axis. The more units we put out, we can equate that to our learning experience increasing here. Whereas our learning proficiency, the lower our total time is, the greater learning proficiency we have here. Again, log log, log scale here, log scale here, x and y axis, and just looking at our two different curves here. Remember that we straighten those curves out here off our regular graph here. They had a little bit of a curvature. Now with our uh, log log plot, they're straight here. So again, the steepness is just the opposite here. So for our 80% learning right here, actually that line here is one minus b here, or one minus log base two of the 80% learning right here. And that equals 0.678 here. That's really taking the slope that we had here, uh, that b value we had for what we had up above here, and we just add one plus the b. The b was a negative amount here by, uh, for this 6.78 was a negative 0.3219, so just add that to one, and that's where you get the, there you go. You subtract that, well, you're, you're taking the negative 3.29 from one, and that gives you 0.678 here. So again, this slope here is uh, 678 for our 80% learning right here, and it's a lesser slope than our 90% learning rate. Again, one minus our log base two of 0.90 or the 90% learning rate. And that gives us a slope here of 0.848 here. So, okay, so for a cumulative time, uh, the lesser the slope, that, that means we have, a, our total time is less here. So we want a lesser slope here. That means we have more rapid progress or a lower cost here. Okay, so when you're talking about a cumulative, uh, again, log log here and a cumulative, you want the lesser slope. The less steep slope here means you're gonna have a lower cost and your greater learning proficiency as you move up here. Nonetheless, these log log plots are nice to look at because instead of looking at that curved line, you've got these nice straight lines here. And that's only because you've got that exponential function you're dealing with. Okay, so that's our log log plots. We looked at it in terms of our uh, unit time or average unit time where we were looking at the slope decreasing. The faster it decreased, the better off we were. Now with our total time here, we want the lower or lesser slope. That means we have a lesser cost here. Okay, and we looked at the two here. All right, so let's just go up here and let's just follow up with our little equation here. Okay, just, as, just to run over what we've done here. We use that cumulative average learning model, just base it on that. And that was a Y here. That was our, this was that, those functions here that we were dealing with on our, on our graphs here. A uh, Y was that cum, is our cumulative average time or cost per unit here. And that is, and that equals A, which is time or cost required to produce the first unit here. And you take that times the cumulative number of units produced here. Remember that was, ba uh, our learning experience increased with the number of units per produced here. And then raised to the power of b, that's that exponent that I was talking about here. Those were the, the steepness of that curve here. So b here is really the slope or the function plotted on a log rod graph. So that was a negative for the unit here. We looked at a negative amount. And really b equals log of base two to whatever the learning rate is here. And 80% would be 0 0.80 here. Okay. So that's our basic function that we're looking at here. So again, let's just go down here and look at the log equals a b here, that exponential, that's our learning rate here. Log b equals log of base two of whatever the learning rate is. So if we look at it in terms of that 80% learning rate, it was log base two of 0 0.80 here, that 80% learning rate, and that's equals negative 0.322 here. And really what we're doing with these log functions, just to understand what we're doing here. If you just, rate, what that, that is really saying is here, uh, what expo, what value does two, what exponential value does two here have to be raised to? What exponential, what 
exponential value of this 2 have to be raised here to equal 0 0.80 here. That's all we're saying with this log function to understand it. So we take, if we, to determine, uh, looking at it just in an exponential fact, uh, the reason here, we take 2, that was our log base 2 here, and we have to raise it to minus 0.322 here. That's the power 2 has to be raised to, and that's going to equal 0 0.80 here. So essentially what we're doing is we're just taking 1 over 2 here to, to do, you have to just do a little bit of arithmetic here to make this positive here. And when you divide it by 1, divided by your 2 raised to 0.3, it would be a plus 3, 2, 2 here. So we're just asking ourselves, what power we needed here to raise 2, 2 to get 80? here. Just so you understand basics here with the log here. And then back just down to understand what we've done here. That y equals ax plus b. That was that cumulative average learning model. That's for the unit time here. Again, b here was equal to log 2 here. Our learning rate, 0 0.80 here. And that's going to equal minus 0 0.3219. And that's for our unit time here. And then for our total time, that was that cumulative time here. This is the case here where you're just taking x, the quantity that you're producing times your function here, y and that equals ax. Well, we would have to put another x in here. I should have put another x in here, plus one plus b here. But anyway, that's how you're gonna, you're gonna come up with that function here. It's just y equals ax plus one plus b here. That's all you're gonna come with. And then you're just taking one minus your log base two here of your learning rate, whatever that is, and that would be 0.678. So total time here, uh, you can see the difference be in your b's here. You're just subtracting one, your b value here from one, uh, that was at 0 0.329 here, and that's going to give you your total time here, 0 0.678. That's all you're doing here. And then if you look at it, the learning rate here for the 90%, we went through that b equals log base 2 here, 0 0.90, and that's going to give you a negative 0 0.1520 here. Again, that's a unit time, and just subtract that here from 1 here, or add it to 1, you can look at it in that way. 1 minus, I'm showing a minus here just to make it, but it, it's, it's really 1 plus this value here, and that's going to give you 0.848 total time. Okay, so that's pretty much what we've done here, and maybe let's just go back up here. Just so you understand what we're talking about, only to understand what these logs are here, they're not that mysterious, they're only uh, for, in this case, understanding our graph here a little easier, rather than look, we look at some curved lines, we can put them in straight line form here and make interpret them that way. Just so you know here, log base 2 of 0 0.80 here equals minus 3.22, which is actually taking, what does 2 have to be? What does this 2 have to be raised to? What power does power of 2 have to be raised to in order to equal 0 0.80 in this case? Okay, so that's what we're talking about, and we've just gone over here, just getting some Example here of a learning and experience curve, looking at it in terms of a log-log plot here and what it all means here. Okay, so that'll summarize our discussion.